Welcome back to Tux Traveler. Well, today we've taken shade under a, it looks like a cherry tree of some form or another. We've taken shade under some tree in the middle of a park to talk a little bit about how much power do you actually need to run your van. And so I want to talk a little bit about the basics of power consumption, how to find the power consumption that you need. We're going to talk about how to measure the amount of power you can draw out of your batteries and how much power you need to recharge those batteries. Now there are websites where you can do a lot of calculations where you can put in a lot of things. So this video here I want to be as a primer to understand the basics of what you're going to do in order to run your calculations. So the first thing we have to understand is we need to understand amps, watts, volts, and things like this. So in the basics of power, the best universal measurement is watts because 100 watts in a 110 volt system is the same amount of watts as in a 12 volt system. The difference is, is the amps that are being used. Watts is equal to the voltage times the amps. And so when you are doing some calculation, if you know the watts, you can divide by the voltage of your system and that will tell you the amount of amps that you need. But if you already know the watts and you know how long something is going to be on, you can calculate things from that. So for example, my system runs on a 12 volt battery system. I have 200 amp hours, which means that I can run at 12 volts, I can run 200 amps for one hour. I can run 100 amps for two hours and so on down the line. And so the amps times the hours is the measure of how much you actually need. And so you can also measure this in terms of watt hours. So I know that my battery is 2400 watt hours, which is the amps times the volts tells me the number of watts. So when you can find the wattage of an individual component that you need, that's usually easier. Some things will tell you the wattage, some things will tell you the amperage at the volts, and either one of these is an appropriate thing. If you check your appliances that plug in, it'll usually tell you the number of watts it's using. If you have something like a laptop or something that has an AC adapter plugging into a separate power adapter, which is actually converting the AC to the DC voltage, then you can calculate the number of watts. So you want to start by first figuring out how you're going to measure things out. I find watts is sometimes easier to use than amps <clears throat> because it takes into account the voltage differences. So whether I'm talking about the number of watts I'm using on an AC system through my inverter or the number of watts I'm using drawing directly off of the battery, the calculations end up being closer to the same. Pardon me, but I was a chemist, so dimensional analysis to me is not a real big deal. So with that, I like using watts when I can, but sometimes it's not possible, so you just do your calculations, and I'll just get the amps, and then I'll just put everything into watts. Now what we need to do is we need to list the variety of things that you have. So I have lights, and the lights use at most. now. A little side note here, when you see a wattage listed on the back of the device, that is the peak wattage usage. That is not how many watts it's going to draw on a regular basis, that's the peak amount of watts. So when you plug it in, turn it on, it's going to draw a big peak first. That peak is actually going to be your max wattage. The actual usage is usually anywhere from a quarter to half of what that is if you actually measure it. This is why if you use a watt meter to measure your wattage, it always gets you better numbers than if you're just trying to calculate it based on the information on the back. But the information on the back is handy because it, this tells you the max. If you can calculate things on the max wattage usage, this is a lot better than estimating it and getting closer to perfect numbers because if you overshoot, you're gonna run into some issues. So you want to start by listing all of your power needs. What do I have in the van? Well, of all the different things I have in the van, I have lights, and some of those run more wattage, some of those run less wattage, some of those are on dimmer switches, so they use more or less depending on how high I have the dimmer switch set. Uh, you'll have computers. Uh, the average person living in a van is going to primarily be relying on laptops. Your laptops are an average of 19 watts in actual practical usable. They go between 10 and 20 watts about. 
you might see something peak up to maybe a 30 or a 40 wattage. Just want to check your AC adapter on the back, but most of these are going to push out 19 volts and about 5 amps. Um, and so your 19 times your 5, that's about 100, but the real world usage is averages closer to around 19, 19, maybe 40 watts if you have something, is an amazing laptop. So more or less depending on the type of laptop it is. In my case, I have a lot of Raspberry Pis, which draw a maximum of 15 watts, and I have the full-fledged computer that plugs into the wall, which is about 150 watts. That is measured. So you want to get all these calculations based on the, the thing. You might have a television that you're running. TVs usually take larger wattages, sometimes up to 400, 600, 800 watts. But if you can get away with a laptop screen instead, or a, not a laptop screen, but a, a computer monitor, these actually usually only run about 50 watts max, closer to 20 watts on actual measured power usage. So for example, one of mine is 12 volt, 3.5 amps. The other one is 19 volts and about, I think it's 1.5 amps. And so it measures out, monitors take about half the power of a television. So if you're living in a van looking to save power, running a monitor is more efficient than running a television. And this just has to do with the components and how they're put together. Now I also have a fan. I have a Max Air fan. These are a maximum of 60 watts. This is again peak highest power, just turning it on. The average real world usage is probably closer to 30 or 40 at max power. I rarely run mine at max. I just usually run it at the minimum power, which is a fairly negligible amount. If I'm running my heater, for example, that can shoot up to about 200 watts as it's charging the glow plug. But once the heaters, uh, we did the whole separate video on heaters, once the heater gets up to temp, that it's going to heat itself with running, uh, burning diesel fuel, and it's going to draw back on the power. So you'll see a power spike as the glow plug is heating up in the diesel heaters, but then the power draw will go down to a very minimal basis uh, after everything's running, and then it's gonna run just the amount of power needed to run the fans mostly. And so, <clears throat> running your heater and then the refrigerator i know my refrigerator runs about 150 watts per day and i did that as an actual calculation i plug the thing in for a few days at a time set the meter back to zero measure the amount of power usage and it's going to draw more power when it's on obviously it's going to draw a lot less power when the temp refrigerator is at temp and it's just sitting there holding temp and so I did my measurement determining it takes about 150 watts per day. So if I take that, divide it by 24, I can actually get the watt hour usage. And that's the third component we need is we need to determine our watt hour usage. So when I said that my battery was 2400 watts, it's actually 2400 watt hours, which means that I can run in more terms of a house electricity, that's 2.4 kilowatt hours. So if you look at your power bill, it's measured in kilowatt hours. And you can actually see on your power bill how many kilowatt hours you use. Now, some of you might be running electric heaters, electric furnaces. This drives up your power. If you have a large plug-in refrigerator, you're gonna draw a whole lot more watt hours than if you just you know have very bare minimum things and keep everything off. I've used as little as just a few kilowatt hours per day when I'm in a studio apartment with no extra resources, all the way up to a, you know, could be up to a few hundred kilowatt hours if you're running electric heat, electric um, water, and things like that. But what you're going to do to calculate your watt hours is you take the amount of wattage that you determined on each of your components, and then you multiply this, of course, by the number of hours that it is on a day. So if you're going to be running your lights for five hours, for example, and you have 0.5 watts is what I have my, watt, my lights listed at, 0.5 watts times five hours means I'm going to be drawing 2.5 watt hours. So you can see running 2.5 watt hours into my 2400 watt hour batteries basically means I can run those lights on day and night without a problem. So you're gonna measure all these things. I know my biggest power consumption for the average day is gonna be my large processing computer. If I'm running that for five hours, 150 watts times the five hours, uh, what's that gonna be? That's gonna be like 15, is that about 
is that about 1500 watt hours I'm not doing the math in my head real quick um, but what you can see is that will draw a lot more power out of the batteries than the little computers that I run the rest of the time which are only drawing like 15 um, watts so if I'm running that for 10 hours a day I can run that guy you know pretty much all day without a huge draw on the power and so calculating your watt hours will give you the amount of watts that you're going to use per day so um, in my case my lights I might only run those for about maybe four or five hours uh, and when it's closer to the winter time now I'm gonna need to run lights more than in the summer when it's long lighter for longer um, I don't generally run laptops but um, I do have um, a computer plugged into the system which is very close to that and so that's um, that's something that's that's good and easy to do um, I don't run televisions I just run computer monitors I might run those let's say those are on for five to ten hours let's just say ten hours at um, 20 watts for example well that would be 200 watt hours per day running on those I do have a cooktop which I really only use if I'm in the middle of bright sun or everything is completely full and I don't need to run anything else that goes anywhere from 200 watts to 1800 watts although it's not usually on for any more than 10 minutes so the wat total wattage draw is not huge the fan calculate how much you're using on that multiply by the time it's on the heater I generally only use under certain circumstances so that's fairly negligible and then the refrigerator as I said I'm running 150 watts per day so whatever that's going to calculate out into the watt hours I can put that into a total average so once you figure out your watt hours you can calculate the total amount of wattage you're using I know for me I generally don't use more than I'd say 1800 watt hours in a day probably closer to 1500 watt hours which usually means I'm pretty good to set now the fourth component here is calculating the power that your battery can draw now I said I have 2400 watt hours but you can't run a battery down to absolute zero you only run if you're running AGMs or lead acid batteries anything like that you can only use 50% of the capacity I'm running lithium so I can use 80% of the capacity which means I have per day an average of 1900 watts that I can use so this assumes I wake up in the morning and there's a solar eclipse that lasts all day no power is being put into my batteries at all I can run 1900 watts that day before I am at risk of running my batteries to the point where I can't use them so I can do my calculations and add up and determine that if I'm on, on average using 1800 watts it actually means I'm cycling things fairly well um, and in reality some days I'll use more some days I'll use less it depends on how frequently I turn on that computer and maybe how much time I spend in donut shops because I'll plug in my laptop into the donut shop power wall instead of having to run on um, uh, instead of having to run on whatever else I'm using and that gets me basically some free power for the day while the batteries are charging off of the Sun so I know on any given day I can use up to 1900 watts without a problem and then usually what happens is I start the day and the batteries are mostly full well they're going to get a little bit of charge off the Sun in the early morning I'm going to use the computers mostly through the day while the solar panels are pulling in this actually increases the efficiency of my charging capacity because sometimes the charge controller will not be drawing enough power uh, it'll be drawing too much power to cram all into the batteries so if I'm running something else at the same time it helps the efficiency of the system and then by the time the uh, the bulk of my work is done most of my computer work is done shut everything down in the evening hours and go on a lighter power mode and this basically keeps me running so for the most part I actually don't generally have any problems I notice Friday night sometimes I have more issues when I'm running the processing computers longer and if I have the opportunity on a Friday I might plug my converter in to charge the batteries off of some poor AC unit somewhere but that's not something I have to do on a regular basis so I know that I can have about 1900 uh, watt hours I can use and then the last component of this is how much do I push into my batteries to charge 
So I have 500 watts of solar on my roof. If I have 1900 watts of power and 500 watts, this means that if my solar panels are running at 100% efficiency, drawing actually 500 watts, 3.8 hours will bring my batteries from completely empty to completely full. Now, 3.8 is a pretty decent average for about how much direct sunlight you're gonna get in any given day, but sunrise to sunset does not mean that that means your solar powers, uh, solar panels are running, but it doesn't mean they don't run at all either. So yesterday it was extraordinarily rainy, very cloudy. I'm literally parked under a tree and I'm still drawing about, um, about 1.5 to 1 amp off of my solar panels and that's 12 watts. Not enough to run my whole day, and I was at risk of running my batteries a little bit lower yesterday, so I did cut things back when I could, where I could. On an average day, that doesn't happen. On an average day, earlier in the morning, I will usually still get about 50% efficiency because I'm using an MPPT charge controller, which means my solar panels are drawing in about 5 to 10 watts, or 5 to 10 amps, multiply into the 12 volt system, that's going to be um, uh, five times your 12, that's gonna be about 60, about 60 to 120 or so watts going in. And then I'm still getting on average about 20 to uh, about 20 ish or so uh, amps coming in, which is doing a very good job of charging things up. So yesterday I actually drew the batteries lower than I like to draw them. By the time I was uh, turning in for the night, my batteries were reporting about 12.7 to 12.8 watt uh, volts, which is getting on the lower end of what my batteries need to be pushing. As of right now, as I'm recording this video before I left the van to look at what's in there, I'm actually at 13.3, which means I am pretty close to a fully charged capacity. So that means that even though yesterday was very cloudy, I got very little solar, I did watch my power consumption, I kept it a little bit lower intentionally, I used a little bit less power uh, on places that I knew I could, and I'm actually fine. I did not have to plug into any external power, and I did not have to worry about drawing things out, and right now, the batteries are pretty close to fully charged, so I'm gonna finish this video out, run in, process it while I still get a lot of sunlight out. You can see it's nice and sunny out behind me. And then by the time I'm done processing this video, shut everything down, I'm done with that large computer for the day. And that means that for the rest of the day, I don't have to worry about any power consumption at all. So again, I know that I have about uh, 3.8 hours of direct full sun to charge the whole thing up, but I will actually be drawing power off of the sun for even now, as it's getting closer and closer to winter time, I'm still drawing usable sun energy off of my solar panels for about 10 hours in a day. I still am doing it. It's not a lot necessarily, but it is enough to keep things running as it is. So hopefully this helped you determine your uh, amount of power that you need, how much solar you need, and um, with that, um, being creative to figure out how to drop your power usage is a wise thing to do. One final tip I'll give you here before I wrap up, something that I did which seriously helps my power capacity, is I'm running everything off of DC that I can. Even devices that I've purchased with AC plugs, I've gotten rid of the AC plugs and I've wired them into the DC system as well. That is a very important step that you can do because you're going to lose about 20% more power converting your monitors, your laptops, your cell phone chargers, converting those from DC into AC to plug in a, a, an adapter, which is drawing it, dropping it back down to DC again. You don't need to do all that. You can run those things on DC as well. Maybe I will do a separate video about how you do all that. So with that being said, guys, thanks for watching. We will see you a little bit further down the road. Subscribe to the channel if you've not done so already. Hit that notification bell and you will be notified when we have more videos out. Thanks for watching and we'll see you down the road.